welcome everyone. Thank you for joining Copper Bridge Foundation for our fourth online uh, presentation, 10 by 10, celebrating our 10 year anniversary. Um, uh, and our, our event, online event is Salamone. I am proud to announce our collaborators for our 10 by 10 series. Um, American Institute of Architects, Miami, uh, Center for Architecture and Design, um, Swiss Embassy of Cuba, uh, our online uh, media sponsors, of course, too, uh, Arch Daily uh, on Cuba, D&D of Argentina. Oops, excuse me. I'd like to uh, also um, mention ICAD, the International Coalition of Art Deco Society, for also being part of this uh, wonderful event. Back in November of last year, Copper Bridge Foundation was asked by ICATS to organize the World Congress and we were uh, very uh, fortunate to be able to travel to Argentina and uh, work with some really wonderful people. Um, I'd like to just take this quick moment to mention a few people prior to introduce you to a very special person, but I would like to thank uh, Fabio Grimpieri, Ana Ramos from Centro Portura de Salamone and uh, Andres Arzola. Now, I want to say uh, quickly um, in Espanol, eh, eh, yo creo que mencionamos antes que este es un, va a ser un, un evento en inglés. Lo que sí eh, te pido que entiendas que cuando se termine el evento, eh, yo voy a hacer eh, eh, en lo que está, eh, eh, vamos a hacer un, como un, eh, eh, perdón, eh, esto un... Eh, translation, que lo van a tener todo eh, después y se lo van a mandar a todo el mundo. Eh, disculpe que es en inglés, pero eh, te agradezco que, que esté con nosotros. ¿Está bien? Entonces, ahora quiero tomar la oportunidad. I want to take this opportunity to also welcome um, Cheryl Jacobs from uh, MCAT, uh, who will have uh, some important information for you. Hey, everybody. Hey, welcome. I, I want to ask you now, before I go on to mute your sound and your video and um maria if people are not doing that i'll ask that you uh, mute them because we really need the bandwidth we have a lot of people on uh, for this program which is really exciting but uh please take a moment and get rid of your video and mute your sound uh so that we reserve the bandwidth uh, Miami Center for Architecture and Design here in Miami is thrilled to partner, as always, with Copper Bridge. And uh, we welcome a new audience to MCAD. Um, follow us on social media. We have a lot of programming going on uh, virtually as well. Uh, Miami underscore CAD. And uh, we look forward to having you enjoy this program. But once again, mute because I still see a lot of you. So please mute yourselves and your videos so that you don't take up bandwidth. And also we will have a Q&A at the end, uh, but it will be just through the chat. So when, as the program goes on and you have questions, put them in the chat and then we'll read them at the end. So great to see all of you and uh, here we go. Well, again, um, muchas gracias and thank you for being with us tonight. Um, as I mentioned that uh, last year we uh, hosted the World Congress uh, in Buenos Aires and we had the pleasure of uh, doing the pre-Congress in Madre Plata and we were able to travel La Pampa and visit many municipalities and view the works of Francisco Salamone. So I want to take also this time to thank all of those people that are joining us from La Pampa. And again, as I say, I apologize if you don't understand the English, I promise you to send you a recorded copy uh, with uh, English trans uh, Spanish translation for you. But I also want to reach out to all those people that we did meet along the way, in Rauch, San Lugaray, um, Balcarce, and Azul. Thank you very much for joining us today. And from Miami to you, uh, this is for you. So this video that I'm about to show you is a seven minute or actually six minute piece of our trip to uh, La Pampa. So I hope you enjoy it.
Este congreso es un congreso de muchísimo prestigio internacional que hayan dado la oportunidad de poderles contar sobre la arquitectura de Salamone que para nosotros además de ser patrimonio nacional es, es la puerta de conocer la provincia de Buenos Aires, la pampa ignorada es algo que agradecemos inmensamente todos los bonaerenses y deseamos compartir con ustedes esta, esta arquitectura y esta impronta en el paisaje de nuestra tierra. This is my first time in Argentina and uh, it's such a strong culture, uh, that it, very unique uh, and distinct from the rest of South America. It's almost like the Argentinians were able to build the dream of this futurist architecture. In four years they built dozens of structures, so it's uh, kind of incredible what Argentina accomplished. Salamone, entre 1936 y 1940, diseña más de 60 edificios en 25 localidades como las nuestras. Un estilo con líneas puras, eh, o en este caso como es el de este edificio, con eh, una figura muy clara que es la cuchilla que representa el, el símbolo del, de, de la función de este espacio. Para esta región eh, es la primera vez que se hace una visita de este índole con turismo internacional. En Saldungaray hay cinco obras de Salomone y son 1.500 habitantes. Así que eso creemos que es muy importante y en aquellos seis años cuando Salomone vio esta región eh, volándola, realmente dijo que iba a ser grande esta localidad y gracias a, a lo que podemos desarrollar sobre lo que es el turismo histórico, eh, hoy en día nosotros tenemos los frutos de ese gran trabajo. Salamón abrió la puerta a conocer la historia y la identidad de la Pampa bonaerense y permite a través de su obra grandilocuente y extraordinaria poder acceder al patrimonio humilde del trabajo de mi provincia. Trabajamos por la identidad, trabajamos por darnos cuenta que esta herencia es valiosa y que nos da futuro y que no podemos solo seguir del presente hacia adelante, que tenemos que venir con toda la historia porque la comunidad se construyó allá al principio, porque hemos descubierto que el patrimonio nos vincula, saca lo mejor de nosotros, nos une, nos hace compartir estos tiempos, nos posibilita encontrarnos y nos posibilita esto del humanismo, que es lo que se viene. This experience today, I think, is one of the most important, not only of this Congress, but of any Congress. Because it's important to get young people involved and interested in their own local heritage and patrimony. Now people will realize there is more in Argentina to see and they will understand and appreciate the heritage. So what these kids have done will have a ripple effect and a lasting impact all over the world.
that uh, presentation of uh, Salomone, Copper Bridge Foundation produced, uh, and took such wonderful uh, time bringing all those images back together. And uh, to relive it tonight, uh, again, took me back to such a wonderful time, not only a year ago. Um, and boy, have things have changed. So again, what a great opportunity to, to be able to travel and meet such wonderful people. And I hope that we can do that soon again. Um, with that said, I'm very proud uh, of the panelists that we have brought together for this evening. Uh, Fabio Grimentieri, Christian Larson, Robin Grove, Carolina Quiroga, and Mariana Quiroga. Uh, but with that said, I'd like to firstly introduce to you tonight our first speaker, Fabio Grimentieri, Argentine architect, member of the National Commission of Monuments of Argentina, and professor at University of Puerto de Teja, de Teja, and uh, he's with us tonight, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy his presentation. Fabio, please. Uh, hello, how are you? How are you all? I hope uh, my connection will survive. It's not going very well, unfortunately. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to, to be here in this uh, this uh, uh, meeting of uh, Art Deco uh, lovers and people interested in architecture, in architectural heritage. I will start as soon as possible with my presentation because, well, it uh, it will take uh, some time and and I want to to be very uh, very straight <laughs> towards the, the word of uh, uh, come come to the word of Salamone. Uh, well, we are today celebrating the the architecture of uh, Francisco Salamone. Uh, as you know, he's, he was an Arch Argentine engineer. He was born in Italy, and he was uh, he was uh, he was uh, really a, a very important uh, 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 character and uh, and also a, a, a great uh, designer of Art Deco architecture. But uh, we have to introduce you to. Argentine architecture. Argentine architecture is, uh, is the result of eclecticism at the end of the 19th century and the early 20th century when the immigration arrived and the, the country was open to all kinds of ideas and uh, influences and uh, uh, immigrants from different parts of Europe came and designed and built all these, uh, these buildings in uh, in uh, in the capital city of Buenos Aires, in the city of La Plata, and and many other towns and city of Argentina. Uh, then in 1900 we have a sort of avant-garde with the construction of the first silos in uh, reinforced concrete, as we see here, unfortunately uh, demolished in the late 1990s. And then the Art Nouveau, the Art Nouveau at the beginning of the 20th century, that was a peculiar Art Nouveau because it, it used a reinforced concrete for the structures. You see here the Galleria Güemes of 1915. And uh, the Art Nouveau uh, show uh, a, a, an array of, uh, of influences from different parts of Europe, as you see here from the Secession to uh, liberty style from Italy, uh, using not only metal structure, but also reinforced concrete structures. Reinforced concrete was uh, very important in, in uh, the build culture of Argentina since the very early 20th century. And you see the three structures in Buenos Aires, one from 1910s, 1920s, and 1930, were the highest structures in reinforced concrete in the world at that time in those decades. We had also very important uh, uh, big building spaces in Art Go style, like these two, that's the bank and the market, then the soccer stadiums that were designed in the 1930s. And of course, the movie theaters uh, that made Buenos Aires one of the capitals of entertainment of the world at that time in the 1930s and 1940s. But let's come to Francisco Salamone. Salamone was born in Italy. He came when he was a child to, to Argentina with his parents. He graduated as engineer and architect in the province of Cordoba, the University of Cordoba. 
Uh, and he built the, his most important work is only four years from 1936 to 1940 during the governorate of Dr. Manuel Fresco. Uh, the province of Buenos Aires the, the, is like a state uh, uh, in terms of uh, is the biggest uh, province of uh, uh, the Argentine Republic. Um, he, he was uh, a very special man. He was very curious. He loved to travel. He was interested in the uh, different uh, uh, issues and different aspects of uh, modern life. You see here in his car with his children uh, traveling across uh, the, the different parts of Argentina, especially work in the province of Cordoba and then in the province of Buenos Aires. And here we have a, a map of the Salamone work in the province of Buenos Aires. And you see the list of of all these buildings and site he designed and he built in only four years. It's a, an extraordinary achievement and uh, an extraordinary uh, tour de force in terms of the design and the construction of so many buildings in, 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 different, in different places. Uh, take into consideration that uh, uh, the province of Buenos Aires is approximately uh, 700 kilometers from, from north to south or more, 800 kilometers. Uh, and you see the impact of his works in, the, in these towns. These towns were uh, settlements uh, that started to be uh, planned and uh, uh, inhabited in the second half of the 19th century, in the very late 19th century, uh, populated with immigrants. Uh, interconnected by railroads at the end of uh, 19th century. Uh, now in the, in the mid, uh, in the early 30s, it, it began the, all the networks of roads that link also these cities. Uh, and we're seeing some of his uh, buildings and the impact on the eclectic architecture and, and modest architecture of these different towns of the Pampas. Uh, the, the architecture of uh, Salamone was inscribed in, the, uh, in, in, in a context uh, in the 1930s where the uh, Argentine avant-garde exploded with painters, uh, uh, people in the field of literature and writers. And it also it flourished in the, in the boom of and the consecration of concrete building culture. We hear uh, some images that show us how important was in the 1930s the exploitations of the quarries of uh, lime and the, uh, the, the transformation into cement in, 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 in the area of the, in the hills of uh, Olavarria and uh, how the reinforced concrete was managed and was uh, 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 built and handled by very able masons, as you see in the other in the other picture. There was a concrete building culture that exploded at that time uh, in in the work of uh, engineers and infrastructure. We hear what the time silos uh, buildings. And Salomon worked with uh, building brigades. Uh, he had. Uh, uh, the command of all these works in a very short time, uh, he hired or the municipal governments hired different contractors, usually from Italian origins, uh, immigrants or, or, or families of immigrants that were Belomone uh, designs. He, he was in charge of, uh, of uh, of uh, directing all these and he goes from one place to, to the other with his car or sometimes with an airplane, a small airplane. We are seeing here the different uh, uh, proposals and projects for squares, municipal buildings. You see his, uh, uh, the fantasy and his imaginations uh, in, in designing great pieces and, and the impact of these pieces in the, in the townscape of these small, small towns. Uh, we are going through uh, different projects, this in Coronel Pringles, the town hall and all the park and square around the, uh, the municipal building, the La Prida town hall enhanced by this uh, 
a very interesting sort of fountain and also uh, uh, covered with, uh, with plants and other. So uh, I'm quickly showing you different uh, pieces of uh, Salamone work in the province of Buenos Aires. You see uh, he was concerned not only with the building, but also the infill of these buildings in the different surroundings, the uh, organization of uh, the urban uh, uh, scenery of, uh, of uh, these central parts of, of, of the towns. He was, uh, he was uh, very involved in the um, design and the integration also of uh, uh, previous uh, uh, buildings and monuments as uh, some uh, town halls, all town halls from the late 19th century or churches, as you see in, in this case. And he was uh, the, the king of these uh, constructions. All, all of these structures that you see are reinforced concrete covered with cement stucco work, the, also the lighting fixtures or the fountains, the benches, all the uh, urban furniture, let's say, is made of uh, cast cement, uh, cast, uh, uh, cast cement and, and uh, different pieces made of uh, uh, cement and stuck over uh, in, in inside the buildings and outside the buildings. Here we have uh, projects, uh, his designs for Pellegrini Town Hall and all the landscape. He worked with uh, a famous and very important landscaping firm uh, Costantini uh, from Italian origin also, and they develop uh, all these ensembles that enhance the, the different towns of uh, the province of Buenos Aires, of the southeast part of the province of Buenos Aires. As an integral designer, he was involved in the interior design, the furniture, we're going to to see this in, in Christian's presentation, lighting features, uh, his creativity and his uh, fantasy impulse that you see in all these, uh, these designs and, and the furniture, uh, the iron work and the, the different uh, detailing of all these buildings that he was concerned with the design of the, from the urban point of view up to the small detail as the handrail or, or the, the different uh, small piece in, inside the, the municipal halls. Here you, here you see the urban furniture and equipment, the urban lighting. And uh, here, uh, one, uh, one of the, the most uh, interesting uh, uh, samples of his work are the slaughterhouses. Each of these uh, small town halls uh, in the outskirts of, uh, of these uh, towns, uh, the uh, small slaughterhouse the municipal slaughterhouse was designed according to hygiene principles and, and the uh, modernization of all the uh, different steps to, to achieve uh, the uh, production and the, uh, the consideration of, uh, of this, uh, the production of, of, uh, of meat in, in the different municipal uh, uh, towns. Balcarce Slaughterhouse is one of the, the most interesting pieces that has been uh, uh, redeveloped and, and re recycled recently and was transformed into a cultural center. Uh, the Slaughterhouse design also concerns not only the, the uh, functional distribution of, of the building and the different parts, but also the different uh, pieces uh, and the railings, as you see in the in the ceilings of of this uh, of these uh, interiors. This is the matadero of the lost slaughterhouse of Guamini, and you see he he Salamone did not uh, 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 stop uh, of uh, of uh, giving his his fantasies to the design of these, these different slaughterhouses. And finally, we have the cemeteries. The cemeteries are, are, are perhaps the most impressive of these, uh, of these uh, structures. They are the portals of uh, the, the cemeteries that were uh, 
they, they were established uh, there in this in the the outskirts of these towns, uh, and he made uh, uh, four great cemeteries: one in in Balcarce, as you see here. Uh, the Azul one is one of the most uh, portraits uh, uh, of 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 this of his cemeteries with the exterminated angel in in the in the front. Uh, the La Prida cemetery, who is uh, that is the most curious, and you see on the right the uh, the image of these colossal structures in the middle of the Pampas. Uh, and finally, the San Lungaray cemetery, another um, uh, extraordinary piece. I, I want to to close this uh, very very short presentation and an overview of uh, Salamone work. Uh, to, to point out uh, 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 something that has been discussed in, 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 in all these recent years that was Salamone inspiration. Salamone uh, was uh, a true Argentine. He was inspired by, by different trends, by different styles, uh, by the work of, uh, of painters, the Kiriko, as you see, and other painters. He was uh, also very uh, interested in the architecture of, of uh, different parts of the world, of Europe and the, the United States, mostly. Uh, for instance, you see here his, uh, uh, his inspiration of some very important uh, pieces like uh, the uh, Potsdam Tower by Mendelssohn in, the, in this uh, town building. Uh, or the references to different uh, Art Deco structures of uh, uh, European countries or references to different international exhibitions started from that of Paris in 20, 1925, the, uh, the exhibition in Paris of 1931 of the colonies, of the French colonies of 1937 uh, uh, international exhibition in Paris. Uh, as you see, he was getting influences from uh, the Netherlands, from France, from uh, uh, Italy, uh, from uh, uh, Germany, uh, and not, not even from pieces of architecture, but also from uh, designs, design that appear in, the, in publicity, in propaganda, uh, in, uh, in cinema, trademarks as you see as you see here uh, and uh, even and recently i have uh, i have have uh, the chance during the this uh, the pandemia and seeing some movies uh, i i got uh, the to see the gay divorcee uh, it's a film from 1934 with ginger rogers and Fre fred astaire with a great sequence or uh, uh, cole porter music uh, at the Continental, and, and you, you see uh, Salamone was very fond of his, uh, he was uh, an obsessive movie, movie uh, theater goer, and uh, for sure he, he had uh, in many of his designs this, this issue of, uh, of movement, of modernity, of uh, uh, sort of uh, classical modernity also that we see. Uh, so we, we have a sort of translation from studios to urban scenes and the urban scenographies uh, seems choreographies in, in some cases. Uh, I, I'm showing some images of that film and some of the urban choreographies of these squares that we see in, in uh, Coronel Pringles, uh, in, uh, in here in, uh, in Villa Maria in Córdoba. And to to finish this presentation, uh, what we we want, uh, and ICATS uh, uh, also desire, is to uh, enhance the 20th century uh, heritage and the 20th century heritage related to Art Deco. We are seeing here that 20th century work heritage had included uh, uh, great pieces of modern uh, of the modern movement: the Bauhaus, Brasilia, the Spreader House. Uh, all the work of Le Corbusier and very recently the work of Fran Lloyd Wright, but uh, only very few pieces from Art Deco, the Stockley Palace in Brussels, or very recently, and we had had it, the ICATS conference, a representative from India that showed the, the, the case of Bombay, the Art Deco 
uh, quarter or, uh, along the, the seaside, uh, the sea coast in Bombay. But uh, we have uh, many other great pieces of Art Deco architecture and uh, urbanism in Shanghai, the, the, the Christ, uh, the Corcovado in Rio, the, of course, the, the Empire States in, in New York that uh, need to be appraised and enhanced and included into an international selection of uh, world heritage. So we, we make votes to towards an inclusive uh, modern heritage and international selection that uh, put together not only the great examples derived from uh, the, uh, the uh, that derivative from the Bauhaus, but also from the Art Deco. And here we have one of the famous uh, deco balls with the designers of the great deco uh, skyscrapers in, in New York. So this is uh, my, my quick presentation on the, on the architecture of uh, Salamone and the issue of uh, how to uh, uh, reappraise and enhance the art deco heritage. And I would like to, uh, to ask uh, uh, Robin Grove, who is vice president of ICATS, and uh, that has been here in Argentina, and we have been following all the presentation, and we have to discuss the issue of uh, the international consecration and an international selection of, uh, of Art Deco pieces and sites and monuments of different parts of the world to be presented at the, at the World Heritage List. So, Robin, what, what, uh, what are your, your thoughts? What, uh, what can you tell us about uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, issue of uh, uh, presenting or uh, putting in the candidacy of, of different uh, monumental sites of international deco to the World Heritage List? Thank you, Fabio. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to add a whole lot more than than what you said, but what I'd like to do is go through and, and just uh, try and point out why these, uh, these uh, buildings are so important to ICADS. Um, I'll just go into my PowerPoint. Once again, Fabio, thank you for, for the introduction. Um, just a bit about ICADS. ICADS provides a focus for activities related to presentation of Art Deco uh, heritage around the world. Uh, and aims to build public awareness of and appreciation of all aspects of the style. An important, uh, important event on the calendar is the World Congress on Art Deco, held biannually, most recently in Buenos Aires. Pre-Congress programs in Mar del Plata and post-Congress programs in Montevideo. ICADS now numbers uh, over 20 societies drawn from countries around the world, including North America, South America, uh, Australasia, Europe, Israel, Africa, China, and India. And in recent years, uh, a number of societies joined long-term members of ICADS, including those from Tel Aviv, London, Mumbai, and Brussels. So the coalition is growing numerically and in influence. And a major activity, both collectively and individually, is to contribute to preservation of the important buildings from the era and to assist local organizations and governments uh, with their efforts to identify, document, and encourage visits to the buildings, very important. It's also important to focus on the activity of prominent architects, either as groups or individually, such as Salamone or Hudek in Shanghai, another important ar architect. And having a region declared as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO uh, is the aim, but it's a difficult, time-consuming and expensive uh, process requiring considerable resources and commitments and with a number of um, demanding criteria that have to, be, have to be met. It should be noted that um, uh, sites from the 20th century are probably vastly underrepresented on the World Heritage List. But it can be done. Uh, prominent examples are Mumbai and uh, Tel Aviv. And we heard presentations uh, at the BA Congress about both these cities and their successful nominations. And here we see um, Tel Aviv, uh, now known as the, the White City. It was added to the UNESCO list in 2004. And 
Mumbai, the beautiful city of uh, Mumbai. And when they combined, their, their bid combined Victorian and Gothic, uh, Victorian Gothic and Art Deco ensembles. Uh, and that was one of uh, India's uh, latest additions. It's a collection of 94 beautiful buildings from, from the 19th and early 20th centuries. Uh, a legacy of the British colonial period, but some wonderful Art Deco buildings included in their, in their, um, their nomination. So back to uh, back to Argentina, and here we see a map of uh, of where we we left Buenos Aires and went down to Mar del Plata, and from there um, we uh, we spread out. Um, when the intention to uh, hold a World Congress in BA was floated, I was determined that the ICADs would, would conduct a pre-Congress program to view the works of Salamone. The start point would be the coastal town of Mar del Plata. Uh, we had a, a, a lot of ground to cover, um, uh, which we did it by bus. Wasn't helped when the toilet on the bus uh, broke, but um, we managed to get through and, and survive. At first, we become interested in the, in the work of Salamone uh, through research into architecture of totalitarian states, particularly Italy, with an emphasis on how architecture was used to further the ideal, uh, ideals in the programs of the states. The Salamone's influences came from many parts of the world, so it makes sense that his work is shared across our international societies. So it was a great thrill to be able to see and visit many of his works and see the preservation works that are underway. It was also exciting to share them with ICAD's members who previously had little exposure to Salamone, uh, but quickly became enamoured with the monumental drama of his designs. It was also gratifying to find out that there, there was a body of work on Salamone uh, already existing that we could tap into. But much remains to be done to further this research and spread the message beyond the world, beyond, beyond the borders of Argentina. There's also, <coughs> excuse me, much, much still to be discovered about his life, his work and his achievements. Fortunately, the expansion of social media provides a great opportunity to spread details of his works to a worldwide audience, almost instantaneous, and to gather support for preservation of important works. So why does ICAD regard the preservation of buildings by Salamone to be important? Well, they provide a connection to the past through historic preservation. An examination of the buildings informs us of the struggle between ideologies in the 1930s, often played out in the world of architecture and community infrastructure. It also represents an important time in the volatile uh, Argentine history in the second half of the 1930s. And it demonstrates that Argentina was advanced in accepting the late styling. One of the thing, main things that it uh, demonstrates was the value of recycling and adaptive reuse of buildings. And, um, uh, and it contributes to environmental responsibility by preserving existing buildings compared to the waste of resources, energy and time and new construction. Example of, uh, of, of the adaptive reuse uh, is the abandoned slaughterhouse in Coronel Pringlet. Um, and here we see it uh, as it was in the 1990s. And here we see it as, as it is today with a lot of restoration done. Uh, and importantly, uh, and that, that blade is, is an absolute stunning uh, example of Salamone's work. But importantly, it's now, um, and now been restored uh, and was and um, we enjoyed a wonderful lunch there. Although some people were not very happy about sitting underneath the um, uh, the ironwork that the carcasses uh, used to be transported across. Nevertheless, it's a good example of how tourism can be uh, can be accommodated in historic buildings. It's important to to foster to tourism to these places with existing and recycled buildings. Tourism actually creates more jobs, uh, creates jobs far more than new construction with conservation efforts that require skilled labour. And one of the major byproducts of listing by UNESCO is a huge increase in visitors, even in an area as large and diverse as the campus. So here we see some of the monumental works of Salamone, which include ceremony, uh, cemetery portals, uh, Belcate, um, Azul, uh, certainly my favourite place on the whole trip, uh, Saldongari uh, and La Prida. 
which unfortunately we only saw at night, uh, but the use of lighting makes a, a very, very dramatic uh, night view. And the other thing that, um, that uh, ICADS is interested in is celebrating the work of native Argentinian architects and engineers and landscapers, engineers and landscapers, and the monumental architectural inheritance that they left behind on the Pampas. And the major examples are town halls, which soon became the most the the, uh, the most important buildings in the towns. And here we see um, Coronel Pringle uh, and oops. Uh, we see a couple of um, uh, light fittings uh, and, and what we're also celebrating here is the, the new uses of materials such as reinforced concrete, native woods, glass and plastic, as well as the relationship between architect and material supplier. Uh, and um, I'm sure Christian will talk more about the, these uh, light fittings. This one demonstrates the integration of Salamone's buildings with parks and gardens. And so he took a, a holistic approach to a particular area uh, in some ways similar to, uh, to Frank Lloyd Wright, but, but probably stands alone with, the, with his, um, his, his attitude. Uh, and um, we see him integrating with the, uh, the park settings and the furniture, the concrete furniture, and the fountains that we see here in Coronel Pringle and La Prida. So a dramatic backdrop, a dramatic building as you, as you come into the town, generally topped with a clock, uh, which is a very important in, uh, in uh, uh, those rural areas. Uh, and um, such a dramatic, uh, uh, dramatic backdrop for visiting these, these towns. One thing, one of the things that we were gratified to see that preservation is important to residents of these towns. We were impressed by the attitude to the memory of Salamone by students, teachers, local officials and regional tourism authorities. And we were gratified to see the, the, um, uh, the way that young people were, were uh, celebrating the, the, um, the patrimony as well. So what's happened to, uh, what's happened to preserve Salamone buildings? The ultimate aim is to have Salamone portfolio included as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO uh, as I said, it's a, it's a lengthy, difficult and expensive process. In 2001, they were declared by the Senate and deputy, deputy and changer of deputy, oh, sorry, I'll say it again, by the Senate and Chamber of Deputies of the province, cultural heritage of the province of Buenos Aires. In 2014, many were also declared by the state as national historic monuments and of national historic and artistic interest. His work is celebrated in Azul at an interpretation centre by various groups, uh, many of whom are represented here today, and a number of online groups. And this tells us that there's a major amount of, a uh, large amount of interest and appreciation of his works. It's now available with a click of the mouse. Submissions have been made to Argentine World Heritage Committee with the intention of submitting to UNESCO. Uh, and as, uh, as Fabio says, it's a lot of work involved. ICADS can assist with the preparation of, of uh, a catalogue of buildings to be considered for uh, inclusion. And we would hope that something like that uh, would be suitable for publication. So what now? The eyes of the world are now being opened to the world of, to the value of Salamone's works. And here we see uh, at the Congress in, uh, in BA, uh, the diversity and the range of presentations. And uh, it's good to see that South America is becoming uh, so prominent with its, with its, um, its emphasis on, on um, uh, patrimony. Just as the ICADS Congress in Havana provided a lot of impetus and attention for preservation in Cuba, we're hopeful that the efforts of ICADS and all the other organisations involved in this program will contribute to the push to celebrate Salamone and his work. And ICADS will continue to support our Argentine colleagues in efforts to have the works of Salamone included as World Heritage Sites. So on behalf, oops, on behalf of the board and president of, of ICADS, Joe Lowndy, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to represent ICADS here today and to congratulate Gio and his team at Copper Bridge for their efforts in putting this, uh, this, um, uh, this event together. Uh, here we see uh, 
uh, some very, very enthusiastic members of the uh, ICADS societies uh, at, the, at the BA Congress. I'd like now to hand over to Christian Larson, who's the Wingate Curator at MAD and Visiting Adjunct Assistant Professor at Bard Graduate Centre in Decorative Arts, Design, History and Material Culture. It's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, Christian's going to present on Salomone's interiors and furniture design. So thank you very much for, for uh, tuning in. Um, thank you, Robin, for the introduction. Boa noite. Buenos noches. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you uh, to speak about Salomone and this uh, fantastic trip uh, that Copper Bridge organized um, through the Pampas to visit these very dispersed um, small towns throughout the region. Uh, they're hard to get to and the opportunity to go from one to the other it was really special and inspirational because there really is nothing else I can think of in the world like it. I think it is a distinct monument to Argentinian culture and um, a innovation, ingenuity. Salomone was, um, let me just start my presentation here. Okay, I think my screen is sharing now, is it? Yes. Uh, Salomone was inspired by um, the world outside. Although what he built, I think, is an absolutely unique and authentic expression of Argentinian uh, beauty and aesthetics, he uh, had a window onto the outside world. And so I start with, uh, Fabio already showed the MGM trademark as one of his, one of his uh, sources of inspiration, but all of those beautiful movie palaces and theaters that Fabio also showed uh, from the 1930s were very much inspiring people towards a new kind of modernity, film as the source of something aspirational and urban and modern. Uh, and so you see that same form coming into, um, into material, into realization in uh, Salomone's work. Um, there's also something of the Baroque here, very heavy handedness to impress you and inspire you with the power of God, literally in, in this uh, portal to the cemetery entrance in um, Tornquist. He took inspiration not only from movies, but from big world events like the 1925 uh, Art Deco, uh, well, it's become known as the Art Deco exhibition, but the World Exposition, um, where the Galerie Lafayette presented this. There were many pavilions uh, uh, showing the, the, the latest wares and industries, uh, arts, um, uh, from many nations across the world. And so I think Salomone was very much aware of these sources when he um, uh, designed what I would on, could only describe as very theatrical. There's something dramatic about each of his, uh, his uh, buildings. And I, I think it's very much um, with the intention to um, uh, position these beacons of urbanism in these small towns. I think there was a, a fear of urban, um, everybody from the countryside uh, aggregating in urban centers like Buenos Aires by depositing these, these very modern urban sort of monuments in the pampas, these uh, vertical, uh, literal lighthouses in the in the middle of these very flat plains. He was offering the people a little piece of uh, cutting edge modernity that was happening in the rest of the world. Um, and you can see here uh, sort of his approach that we can put it into context uh, with uh, some contemporaries. You know, the Art Deco in France that you see on the left with um, a sconce from Lalique and Edgar Brandt um, is so stylized and floral and oh, I would say even overworked. Um, on the far right, you see Bauhaus principles, right? Stripping things down to pure volume and geometry, industrial materials, or with the hope of uh, producing industrially. And Salomone sits somewhere in the middle. I think he's embracing both worlds. There's something ornamental going on here, but there's also this pragmatic um, uh, functionalism that he's also in awe with. But, but he, he renders that, that rational, functional um, uh, ethos into a decorative form. And I think that's where 
he's offering a, a, a uniquely Argentinian style. He's very much an architect of the type of Frank Lloyd Wright. He, is, he believes in the Gesamtkunstwerk. He wants uh, everything to in his building from the exterior, uh, the building itself and what's inside of it to harmonize. So you'll often find pieces of furniture that are echoing the very form of the building that they occupy. Um, you'll find that he's working with materials that are completely modern, chromed metals, uh, industrially produced, uh, plate glass. One of the things that I was really fascinated by was the, the painted underlayer backside of the glass. This is something that you find in a lot of French deco, especially jewelry and um, finishes uh, inside of interiors. Ooh, where did that little red squiggle come from? Anyway, uh, I'm not sure if it's, if it's just from time and patination of the material degrading or whether it was on purpose, but there's an al almost a marbleization that you can see in this wavy, wavy, um, it would be nice to get a conservator to look at these uh, so we could understand better what his intention was. Maybe somebody already knows, but uh, I don't. Um, you can see that these forms, he, he'll use it as a light motif throughout the whole building. So if he starts with a, with a circular motif um, on the lamp, you might see it echoed in this beautiful window in La Prida. Um, it's also echoed on, uh, echoed on the back of a chair or on the side of a, of a club chair. So it creates a unity and a harmony to the overall building and a, and a sense of, you find that these things also, this is La Prida that I'm showing you, um, but you'll find that these same geometric forms are continuous throughout the buildings in the Pampas, and I, they give his overall oeuvre um, uh, cohesiveness. Uh, this is one of the uh, representatives' desks from inside the assembly hall, and here you can see how they work together. Uh, over time, of course, I think some of the finishes inside of these interiors have changed and the space has needed to be functional, but it's amazing how the furniture persists and it's still being used, and it's in quite good shape. Some of it's um, a little bit worse for the wear as this phenomenal piece. For me, this was the masterpiece of the, in terms of furniture of the trip, uh, really impressive uh, desk secretaire that was at the entrance to the town hall in La, uh, La Pride. Uh, you can see that he's veneered the surface of this globe like structure with, with the two uh, drawers that you could pull out, um, but it's in bad shape. It's been kicked around at the base and it, it needs, some, needs some work. One can only guess, I don't know what his source of inspiration would be here, but I would guess something like, uh, this is very much in tune with the uh, Paris Fair and Trilon uh, from the New York World's Fair. This may have even anticipated. Um, these lamps fascinated me. I, they're ultra contemporary in my view. I, there's almost nothing fresher than the design of these lamps and the way that they reflect light in the space. They immediately made me think of what surely was one of his sources of inspiration, uh, the film Metropolis, where you see the man machine uh, woman or the woman who would inspire the man machine in this kind of horizontal ring-like uh, configuration, drawing her mind into the robot behind this sort of mad scientist Frankenstein. And there's another picture of the, of the robot machine woman coming to life. This sort of futuristic vision of, a, of a, the possibility of the future um, was optimistic, it was mechanical, it was advanced. And I think he wanted to bring some of that um, perfume to the air of his, his designs. Um, and you'll see not just circular motifs, but some of the buildings like uh, this one, I think in Rausch, um, was uh, completely based on uh, rectangles and squares from the tower itself to um, the um, chandelier at the entrance to the building, even the um, hand railings and uh, detailing on the uh, door handles are all in a kind of gridded configuration. You even see it in the grand staircase with the windows at the top. It's a rectangular configuration rather than the circular one that I showed you in La Prida. So he's very cognizant of how to harmonize aesthetically all of his spaces. 
include, you know, this, this is just a little uh, ceiling light, but he's very conscious of how to um, keep his forms echoing throughout the space. This one blew me away though. I, I thought that this was such a beautiful um, example of his genius for the intersection of various geometric volumes, triangle, square, prism, uh, cone, circle, um, all coming together in this very harmonious, beautiful way that was absolutely of his time. Other uh, deco, if we want to call it deco, I hesitate to call him deco exactly. I think it's one of his influences, but he's drawing as much from Italian fascism and Mussolini's a regime of architecture as he is from others, uh, from Hollywood in, in the United States or New York skyscrapers. All of these were feeding his vision. Um, here you can see that lamp within the context of the, the representation hall. But you see the same type of intersecting forms in a ring by Jean Dupré from Paris uh, in the mid 1920s or in Brazil with uh, Varshavchik, who was one of the modernists to build the first modernist house here in Sao Paulo, where I am right now. And this is absolutely avant-garde for the time it was, it was uh, made. And there's this interest in intersecting pure geometries. There you see it in the context of the interior. And this, I thought this was genius, a, a cigarette uh, ashtray that he built into <laughs> the corner of the sofa with uh, the square and the cone coming together to form that little deposit so you have somewhere to put your ashes. And you see it repeated again in chandeliers. And, and I'll end with this image of the uh, cemetery gate. I thought it was perfect to emphasize this idea of drama. You know, it was a grand theater that he was inviting you to enjoy, whether it was in a public park uh, out in the open or the theater of being part of a town hall meeting. Um, but there's something very theatric to his sensibility of design. Um, and with that, I'll end my presentation. Thank you, Christian. It was uh, very interesting. And uh, the, the, this issue of pointing out that uh, uh, Salamone, and from this very uh, southern part of, uh, of, Amer of the Americas, uh, has uh, many other designers and people of, uh, dif in different aspects of culture have been looking through different uh, influences and models and references in the in the at the same time in the 1930s it was the emergence of uh, Jorge Luis Borges who was taking uh, inspiration and was and references from literature from different european countries so it's a, a distinctive aspect of argentine culture especially starting in the late 19th century and into the mid 20th century. Now we are going to uh, to talk uh, or, or hear some considerations of uh, Carolina Quiroga and Mariana Quiroga. Uh, both of them are architects, are very much uh, involved in uh, historic preservation and history of architecture. And uh, Carolina Quiroga is the president of uh, the Argentine section of Docomomo. Mariana Quiroga is also a member of Docomomo, and Mariana has been working in the Salamone network as part of, uh, of uh, a small team trying to put together the different work and working together with all the municipal governments of, uh, of these cities of the province of Buenos Aires. So, Carolina, your turn. So, thank you. Uh, I really like to be here and uh, I think I like to talk about the wall of Salamone in the world. And uh, how can we think of a sustainable future for a heritage as valuable as Francisco Salamone's work? I believe that one of the central themes is the documentation, the registration, and dissemination of his work as a basis for transmitting his legacy to future generations. Salomone was included in the International Register of Docomomo in 2008. And uh, Docomomo International is a nonprofit organization dedicated to documentation and conservation of buildings, sites, and neighborhoods of the modern movement. 
It was initiated in 1988 by Hubert Jan Henkert and Bessel de Jong architects uh, at the School of Architecture at the Technical University in Eindhoven, the Netherlands. And um, Docomomo aims to bring the significance of the architecture of the modern movement to the attention of the public, the authorities, the professionals, and the educational community identify and promote the surviving of the works of the modern movement and promote the conservation and reuse of buildings. Uh, Documomo has an international specialist committee on register and the Documomo register was created to engage national and regional chapters to, in the documentation of modern buildings. Uh, and its mission is the development of an inventory of modern heritage. And every year, chapters submit a new series of pitches. Um, well, this is the introduction about what And uh, I think that the register of Salomon's work uh, in the Dogomomo International Inventory is an interesting to understand how the concept of modern architecture was changing and expanding. The first Dokumomo register was in 1998 with a selection of the most relevant works from each country. At this time, the choice of the cases was focused on rationalist architecture and international style architecture. So wide, poor, clear, concrete, and glass. And since 2003, this annual selection has been related to specific things, okay. recreation, post-war housing. But in 2008, the theme was otherness. And this register was connected with the international conference in Ankara, Turkey. And the idea of other modernists starts to be very strong in the Komomo. And what is this other modernism? So the modern heritage that was marginalized or suppressed by a canonical vision of modernity. And this canonical vision uh, was really focused on the master architects, as Fabio mentioned, Bauhaus style, Van der Rohe, Frank Wright, and was really connected also with the uh, nomination in the World Heritage Site. And also this canonical vision was focused in icon buildings, you know, from the early stage of modernity and modern architecture strongly associated with the European context and vision. The registration of the work was uh, very special also because the feature was not about a building, no, it was about Salomon's work and was made by uh, Alfredo Conti and he included several works, town halls, cemeteries, uh, public space in all these cities, you know? And I think one point is this register is a paradigm shift in terms of heritage, since we are not talking about an individual building, but also a group of buildings and an architecture that provides identity by linking multiple scales, territory, landscape, city, public space. So this is for now really usual, but at that moment was very uh, different. And uh, another point of change is the question of aesthetic and the architectural expression of modernity. Uh, Salomone develops a unique architectural language that combines reference from art deco and and this really expands the idea no, of modernity as pure, wide, clear architecture. And 
why it's so important to continue researching and disseminating Salomon's work for this international recognition? On the one hand, the documentary study allowed us to discover more aspects to the theory and practice about this architect. And on the other hand, documenting, redocumenting, and disseminating the architecture of Salomone makes it possible to value and implement action for its care and protection. And Mariana will develop more about this aspect. And this involves both government, academic, and professional institution and the community at large. Likewise, documentation is the indispensable conceptual and technical support to carry out appropriate conservation strategies in the buildings uh, of Salomone. Urban renewal, adaptive reuse, technical adaptation. And uh, I think this uh, inclusion in the Docomomo uh, register, it's a really example uh, of an unorthodox modernity. And I think its value lights precisely in the idea of uh, what is valuable about Salomon, no? this idea to not orthodox. And uh, I like to talk about, about the expanded modernity, about the modernity that cannot fit into a single definition, and about uh, my favorite, a creative modernity. And I think in all these concepts, uh, we can put together no? uh, about what we need in the future. We need some inclusive modernity, as Fabio uh, really shows in the final pictures, no? showing the Bauhaus and the, and the deco. And so this is why I think it is work. It's very good to put together all the efforts, no? Uh, to value and to preserve the architecture of Salomon, and also to consider this change of idea in Dokomomo to to think, to make some, to have some inspiration and some uh, basis of the concept to make um, the this heritage part of the UNESCO World Heritage List. Thank you. And now I think my short presentation is connected with the previous and also with the Mariana. Mariana, hello. Yes, thank you, Carolina. <clears throat> Let's hear Mariana now. Thank you, Carolina. Good night. It's nice to see a lot of hello. friends. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to share my PowerPoint. Heritage and change. During the first half of the 20th century, Salomon's work surprised the inhabitants of the Buenos Aires Pampas for being imposing, creative, provocative, futuristic. It was defined as a shout to the landscape, a populist futurism. Salomon's work stand out on the silent rural landscape. He created a new image out of a state's architecture at municipality strategic points. He developed programs for the city halls, government, the squares, urban public spaces, slaughterhouses, production, cemeteries, death and immortality. Salomone brought modernity to the Pampas in an article style unique in the world. The buildings make up a system in which material, expressive, functional, and typological possibility were investigated and experimented with. In order to understand, protect, and restore the work, we must consider it as a whole. We create a national and provincial network, Salamone Network, La Red de Trabajo Salamone. We must consider um, in cooperation with the municipalities to start with concrete actions. Regarding development programs, the squares and cemetery portals are in need of conservation and restoration efforts to bring them back to their original state. 
City halls have the most interesting furniture and lighting and appliances. We see in Kristen Larson presentation. This requires restoration and upgrade to comply to current living and technological standards. Heritage industrial slaughterhouses are a great opportunity for repurpose. Local communities must rethink their intended use. These are versatile buildings with great special value, fit for new use cases. As defined by UNESCO international standards, industrial heritage has a social value as part of the record of the lives of ordinary men and women. It's important to highlight that these buildings are placed within their historical surroundings, which will be taken into account as part of the, confer on the conservation efforts. Preliminary work is ongoing at the Wamini Slaughterhouse, specifically sample gathering and laboratory tests, city app and Salomon network, scanned existing blueprints, as well as registration and documentation that was exhibited at this year's Salomones Congress in Valcarce, thanks to Ana Ramos, of course. And here we can see the Marcelo Merlo beautiful work. And at the end, we think that these heritage buildings must fulfill contemporary architectural and social needs, empowering their historical value. Tenemos la responsabilidad de asignar a los edificios funciones que, respondiendo a las necesidades de la vida contemporánea, respeten su carácter y garanticen su supervivencia. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Well, thank you, the Quirogas, uh, both uh, Carolina and, uh, and Mariana. And, uh, well, to close uh, this... Uh, this uh, sort of uh, presentation and dialogue on the Salamone work. I think uh, uh, it would be interesting uh, to share with our audience uh, part of uh, the uh, ideas and we have, uh, we have uh, presented and to think a little bit more about the, the challenges that uh, the preservation of uh, this ensemble of, uh, of uh, monuments and sites that uh, cover uh, different scales, no? It's a, it's a real a challenge because we have from the urban and territorial scale, we have seen, for instance, the impact of uh, these uh, great uh, cemetery portals on the, on the landscape uh, with the cows and the agriculture uh, uh, areas around the, 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 the towns, uh, the, the squares and the, and the buildings and the landscaping that was also a very important part of the, of, uh, the whole project of Salamone. Coming into the architecture, uh, uh, the, the functional aspects that we have seen in the slaughterhouses that some of them still preserve part of the equipment and and all the the, the and some of the fittings and and infrastructure that was used for this building to be in function and coming inside the municipal uh, uh, palaces uh, the buildings the the different decorative elements from the floors uh, to the ironwork or just coming into the lighting fixtures and the furniture. It really is a, a sort of a universe, a Salamone universe, that, uh, that goes from the territory to the, to the detail, you know? And uh, this is a real a challenge for, uh, for uh, all, all the, the different actors that are in, involved in the in a, in a program, in a project to preserve and enhance and, and, uh, and uh, you know, to give uh, better uses for this, uh, for these buildings and to, and also as, as it's a set of, uh, of buildings and heritage that is dispersed in different, in different towns, uh, there is also the, the challenge how to show them and how to 
uh, organized uh, different uh, itineraries. One of them was successfully arranged by by Geo and Copper Bridge and ICATS uh, during this uh, this visits of uh, of last uh, last November. So, uh, do you have you have you work or do you have any any other cases you have uh, in mind that could be a sort of a reference for this this challenge? Robin, for instance, at ICATS, have you? Have you worked with uh, the uh, consecration of uh, or or the preservation of uh, sets of buildings like like this? Yeah, not directly, but we've um, uh, we've certainly uh, welcomed uh, Tel Aviv and Mumbai into the ICADS um, uh, group uh, in recent years, and we'd certainly be uh, be. Uh, uh, Certainly, be interested in in working with anybody else that was uh, was doing some sort of um, uh, nomination. But to me, this is the biggest one going around the world at the moment. And so, any, any resources that we have, I think um, I, personally, I'd like to have them put into into a, a work on Salamone. Um, but we're receptive to um, to other other uh, other other um, inquiries. I mean, one of the interesting things these days is how much information is out there about places that we didn't know a lot about. Uh, and we look at some of the places in Africa, for example, um, that, are, that are full of deco buildings and modernist buildings uh, that no one really knew about. Eastern Europe is another area uh, where, where information is coming through now. So, um, so the possibilities are, um, uh, are endless, if you like. But um, to me, Salamone's work has, uh, has uh, priority. I have I, I remember and, and Mariana and also Carolina, maybe Christian Larsen, in the World Heritage List uh, in the recent year there has been an inclusion of the Camino del Inca, the Inca Way, that is uh, yeah. also like the Salamon, it's an uh, uh, archipelago uh, of different sites in six different countries and in Argentina in seven different provinces. It was a very hard work uh, to put mm. together uh, preservation criteria uh, to organize, uh, you know, manage preservation management plan for all these sites all together. Uh, it's, it's a work uh, that uh, needs to be coordinated where each, uh, each, uh, each district has a very important role uh, by, by themselves to take care of the pieces that they have in their, in their towns and their areas but also the exchange between the different uh, uh, governments, the different communities uh, to, to agree on uh, similar criteria to protect, to preserve, to enhance this, this heritage, no? Uh, what do you think, uh, Christian, about, uh, uh, since you are a specialist on, the, on this uh, more, uh, um, let's say, uh, in, in a way, fragile work of uh, of Salomon and interior design, the interior, uh, the furniture. Uh, how would you say it would be uh, a, a first step to 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 go forward and, and preserve and let uh, uh, know better all this uh, all this ensemble? Thank you. Uh, the first step I think has already happened, and it's an important first step, that the locals themselves who use the buildings and use the furniture appreciate it. Uh, we know from examples of Shandigarh in India, for example, the, the furniture and the design of those buildings of Le Corbusier and Pierre Jeanneret did not work for the locals. And with time, even the construction of those pieces of furniture was not as robust uh, as it could have been, and they were thrown out into the open where the elements had destroyed them. They've been lovingly restored by Paris galleries, where they've been turned around and turned into commodities in the art world that fetch tens of thousands of dollars, if not a hundred thousand dollars. The same thing could happen to Salamone. It's of that quality. It is that distinct and unique and rare. Um, and I hope that it doesn't reach that market in a way, because it would mean that those pieces would be evacuated from 
their homes, which they were intended for. Um, so I would say that, you know, the, the first step is the, the local appreciation of the work and, and their insistence on keeping it. I, we noticed on our tour that some of these interiors have already been um, dismantled to some degree. There were sconces missing. There were lamps that had been pulled out. Somehow the lamps are, are a fixture, no pun intended, of, of people's fascination, right? Uh, they're, they're particularly alluring and beautiful. Um, the furniture is a little bit more cubist, chunky, heavy, um, but it, it's all of, a, of an aesthetic and very much of, a, of, of that sort of deco uh, line of design that I think um, it would be appealing to a world market. So we have to be careful of, about not turning it <laughs> into a commodity. And yet, if it, that happens or one piece gets released to an auction house, it could be a means to make money for the restoration of the rest. You know, you could spare a few chairs if it means a significant amount of money to restore the buildings and the interiors. But I, I, what you have mentioned uh, the comparison, we have uh, worked quite uh, a bit on the uh, comparison or searching for the sources of his uh, uh, iconography of, uh, of the of the you know the gates of the cemeteries or but little has been studied and you just started with that point in your presentation on the comparison and on seeing what could have been the inspiration or the references or the elements he he took into into account to to develop his his uh, uh, proposals, no, for furniture, for lighting. That was very interesting. What you mentioned, it's very little done up to now. Hi, Fabio. It's Cheryl. How are you? Hello. Sorry Cheryl. for the interruption, but we have a few questions from the audience that ah, okay. I thought uh, I might you. read. So one of the questions, and any one of you that are. Uh, the um, Carolina and, and uh, maybe Mariana are the best to answer this, but is there a time frame that you think that sa the Salamone might be included as a World Heritage Site? And is there mm -hmm. anything that the group can do to help? Now, one point about here in the chat is uh, so about the inclusion in the World Heritage List, as I, I think there is a very strong uh, precedent with the inclusion in Docomomo. And also in the way uh, the Salomones War was declared national monument. No, because it's impossible to think about all these, even our buildings. Uh, so it's not a master plan, no, was not conceived like, for example, Antonio Villar Automobile Club Argentino is different, was a complete plan. But here, I think one of the values is we're thinking about the construction of the landscape. And it's not possible to think this heritage as individual elements. So this is one question. But about the inclusion in the World Heritage List, I think is it's a really interesting challenge. And I think it could be very um, special to the possibility to include this Latin American contribution about this uh, period of the history of architecture. And I think because it's a unique work also, but it's open the discussion about, of course. Thank you. Um... So one of the, uh, someone was asking how many of Salamone's slaughterhouses have been repurposed? Who knows that? Well, the, the Salamone, one of uh, well, the best, the best uh, renovation and restoration of one of Salamone's uh, slaughterhouse is that of Balcarce that was transformed into the cultural center where we that we visited and we enjoy a great asado there uh, and it has been uh, uh, open as the cultural center for the community there who uh, is uh, is coming to the place and 
and uh, participating of, of different activities. Uh, Valcarce, the group of uh, the Centro Cultural Salamón in Valcarce is uh, led by, by Anna, is very active. Uh, Anna is also working on this network and it's a very important piece of this network, always pushing and, and putting everything together. And, uh, and they have even the project to restore, to reconstruct the one piece of Salamon in the center of, of, the, of the square that was demolished in the, in the 1940s. So uh, this is a, is a good uh, case. In some, other, uh, in some other cities, as uh, Pringles, the, the slaughterhouse is very well preserved, even the, the equipment and the different elements. And we also visited that. So it is different, the different slaughterhouses and different, different uh, conservation <laughs> steps. Well, one of the things that, that, that you said to Fabio, which is uh, true again, is uh, what can we do? In this case, you just mentioned uh, in Barcarce how, uh, because I think it was uh, Ana Ramos mentioned, because of our visit to uh, uh, Salamone, uh, to Barcarce to visit the works of Salamone, uh, they actually uh, gave uh, the... Uh, uh, I believe the the, um, the grant to restore that uh, uh, particular monument that you just mentioned. So again, it's all about promoting in, in any way possible, as Christian said, um, documenting uh, us visiting ICATS, going uh, to to visit the uh, this particular uh, panel discussion with so many um, um, organizations. Uh, I just want to say that for us. This is the largest um, attended uh, panel discussion to date. We had over 200 people, so there's uh, quite a bit of interest uh, for the works of Francisco Salamone. Again, and mm -hmm. to have such great panelists come together to um, um, yeah. discuss this, it's been quite amazing for us and we're been... very happy to be part of this. And the time did go quite fast. It really I must did. Say. Um, so I have, I, I wanna squeeze in one last question. Uh, someone was asking, you know, how did all of that work get in such a sh get done in such a short time? But I think also the question was, was the furniture were the furniture and the lamps made in Argentina at the time? Do you know? Yes, yes, they were made here in Argentina. The in Argentina, there was from late 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, the the fresh decoration firms that open their branches as in the United States, Janssen, Carl Young, Warren and Gillo, uh, and some others. And they were, they, they train people there, they train Argentines or immigrants. And then they, they work by themselves or even Argentine firms, decoration firms that work uh, with important designers uh, like the Comte firm that worked in those years in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, uh, and were in, in, in contact with, uh, with famous uh, the designers. Yes, yes, that was all made here in, in Argentina. Incredible. Um, so we're really out of time, and this, is, I, this discussion could go on and on. Uh, uh, Fabio, I want to thank you so much. Uh, thanks to Robin, to Christian. Hi, Christian. I didn't get to see you before. Uh, and thanks to Carolina and Mariana. And I wanted to say we got a note that um, Paula Salamone O'Connor is Salamone's niece. And uh, she has been on with us. And she's tuning in from Travisi, Italy. So welcome mm -hmm. to her. That was really wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, Copper Bridge. Uh, I have to say, I was on this trip. It was pretty amazing. I was, it was jaw dropping. And um, I don't know, Gia, if you have any parting words, I just want to thank everyone. Before, don't hang up because as soon as we stop yammering, uh, we're going to play a great um, closing video for you from Copper Bridge. I just want to say again, thank you uh, to Fabio, to Christian. Mariana, Carolina, Robin, for coming together to promote this incredible Argentine heritage, Ana Ramos. Um, and I said it earlier before that uh, 
We have such a wonderful family, extended family now in Argentina. The fact that, that I went there last year to organize this event, we spent uh, many months there and uh, had the pleasure of working with you, Fabio. But we met, I met so many new friends. And uh, then I brought a hundred of my friends over to you and we created now this. This is what happens when Copper Bridge promotes a mission of dialogue through the arts. So thank you for the opportunity to extend this on to a further cause, which is hopefully bringing Salamone to the UNESCO World Heritage List. So again, this is the power of unity. So thank you very much for being part of it. Again, there's so many other people to, to thank, and I'll do that personally later. But to all my Argentine friends. Excuse me, friends, excuse me Gio, 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 we have to send all the communities from the different, the different municipalities that have uh, contributed with their great little videos you Absolutely. have been sending. They, they, they were great, not only when all the, the delegation of ICATS was there in the different in towns, but also for this event, uh, they have been uh, contributing with this sharing their, their heritage and that was un invaluable. That was one of the best parts of our um, gearing up for this promotion for Salomone was working with Ana Ramos and all the municipalities and their videos that they sent in and our, our staff actually worked quite diligently with them. Uh, uh, Caterina Villaverde and um, uh, Maria Bota worked uh, to create these uh, small, uh, as you say, vignettes with them. But we got to know them, so it's like welcome to La Pampa, and they are they're waiting for us to come back. I know, but we welcome them here to to this uh, um, panel that we did because we have a lot here. I see the names there; they're all part of this uh, panel discussion. So this is great to unite everyone. That's great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to our speakers. Thank you all for tuning in and don't go away. Coming up is a really uh, brief video about Copper Bridge. Thank you very much. All. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao, Paula. Thank you.